Oh, so I am here in, where am I? Little Rock, Arkansas. I'm speaking at a church called Encounter Church. It used to be called Bethel, Little Rock, but now it's Encounter Church. These people are precious, a people of prayer, a people of intimacy, and the communion that we have in the New Covenant, they are just real and down to earth. Love them. So uh, I'm going to introduce you to them all when I get there, but I'm heading now to the meeting. Uh, I'm going to preach tonight on Jesus Christ. <laughs> to kill his son, God says to him, don't kill him. He says, now I know that you fear me. Do you see it? This is the very first time the fear of the Lord is mentioned. Now I know that you fear me. Now he goes on to describe what it looks like. He says, because you have not withheld from me. Because you have not withheld from me. The fear of the Lord in its very first definition connected even with worship is this. I withhold nothing from you, Lord. Everything is yours. My mind, my will, my body, everything I am. Father, over this word that's been sown up into us, Father, let there be a hundredfold harvest. Would you watch over this word that's been sown into us? And Father, just... Help us to, to cultivate this word. To just go after your presence. So I'm back from the service. I preached tonight on 2 Samuel. Year by year, David sought the presence of the Lord. At the end of the chapter, God delivers him from all his enemies. <laughs> so as we seek God's presence year by year, our enemies fall underneath our feet all the way till every one of them is laid beneath us. Seeking the presence of the Lord as priority is where the strength and the victory comes from. So it's morning time. I'm going to go down and get some coffee. But I was thinking this morning upon Exodus 33 when Moses says, Who will you send with me to do this great task? And the Lord says, I will go with you. My presence shall go with you and give you rest. Not only is the presence connected to rest and the rest connected to presence inseparably, but maybe this is what Jesus was referring to when he says, come to me, I'll give you rest. He's saying, I am the presence of God. I will go with you and give you rest. Come to me, I'll give you rest. Jesus is God's presence. I just finished preaching the morning service here at Encounter in, in um, Little Rock, Arkansas. I preached on communion with God, specifically through the Word. How we apply our minds to Christ in rest and our eyes open. Just like Jacob laid his head upon the rock, laid his head upon the rock, his eyes opened to see not only the activity of angels ascending and descending, which is the same language Jesus uses with Nathaniel, you shall see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. But above the ascending and descending of the angels, it says that the Lord stood above them all. So we will, as we apply our minds to the scriptures, to God in rest, 
our eyes will open to see him and his activity. Oh, praise God. So now I'm going to go in here and eat at, uh, at Valerie's house, one of the most beautiful houses I've ever seen in my life. And I'm going to talk to them, see what the Lord's been saying to them. It's always a joy to meet these ones that are laboring in the vineyard of the Lord, faithful, loving the Lord, intimate with Him, and ministers of the gospel. That's the only motivation for anything I do. Like, um, And so that's really how the Lord has baited me throughout my my Christian walk is it's with the, the promise of deeper intimacy. So that's really, that's how he gets me to do things, which I don't know if that's good or bad, but that's always how he, he will come to me. It's like, if I want to invite you into deeper intimacy. And so that's how he gets my yes. <laughs> is yeah baiting me with intimacy so um yeah he's really doing it that in the place of of leadership i think um uh becoming a christian later in life um 19 almost 20 um and kind of even then being outside of the church i didn't really like what i saw in the church i didn't really like what i saw in leadership and so i really kept a distance in in my mind leadership was was something that was almost gross it was um kind of just without the lord without um a deep fellowship with the lord and they they intimacy and leadership never in my mind um were one thing and so in this season the lord has really come to me and said i, I want to take you into a deeper place of intimacy and it's through leadership and it was a revelation for me because those things were polar opposites. Um, and so he's just, I think I've been in this season of um, the Lord inviting me into intimately knowing him um, in the place of leadership, that he actually, he loves leadership and it's this really intimate, intimate place uh, of knowing him. And I was just sharing with you, Eric, that um, Exodus 33 is like, I live in, uh, in Exodus 33 and I have for years and, um, and I love just to get before the Lord and say, I just want to meet with you face to face. I want to meet with you face to face. And, and I'm always like, I love to be really bold with the Lord and say, show me your glory. And I'm like, if you showed Moses your glory, you'll do it for me. And we are, we're in a greater covenant. So I just love to be really bold. And I feel his pleasure when I'm like pressing that. But then just recently he, get, he said to me, you know, Exodus 33 is in the context of leadership. And it was like, Oh, that place of meeting with the Lord face to face and Moses going, show me your glory. It was in this place of intimacy and leadership. And so I've, that's where I'm at. I'm on this place of just discovering, um, meeting with the Lord face to face in this context of leadership. And yeah, it's, it's been good. <laughs> so now I am in Fort Smith, Arkansas. I made the drive from Little Rock. And it's morning now, I'm going to Victory Christian to preach. This morning I was looking at Exodus 33. Moses is so dependent upon God's presence. Lord, don't send me up from here if your presence doesn't go with me. How will we be distinguished from all the other people without your presence? And I wonder if you'll join me today in saying this. Oh Lord, please set me apart from all the rest of humanity by the presence of your spirit. Lord, help me lean completely upon your presence in everything. Oh, make us dependent, God, upon your presence. May it be the center of our lives. I just wanna live a life that wakes up for the presence of the Lord. That's the reason why I'm alive today, is to lean upon, be attentive to, do everything from his presence. No matter what the day holds, no matter how mundane or how spiritual the things of the day are, let it be that his presence, which is himself, that is most important. Because in valuing his presence, we cherish God himself. I'm going to go see Chris now. Bro, tell him something that the Lord's been saying to you. Oneness. 
that's that's the only thing, well, that's the biggest thing that God's sharing with me, that communion with God brings about oneness. And communion is the shared thoughts, feelings, and intimate moments between two people. God is a person, so are we. When we're in oneness with him, there's a sharing of space and a sharing of communion. And then from there, we live and move and have our being and be a light to others. Praise God, brother, that's powerful. <laughs> 20 to 1. So what did you get? What did you get? Is tacos? Oh yeah, tacos and a bunch of awesome Mexican food. Hola. Hola. <laughs> tacos. Tacos. Jessica, huh? tacos spa. Taco spa. Yeah, hey. that's my wife. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe to our channel. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Bro, so how was how was today? Oh man, it was very beautiful. It was very rich with the presence of the Lord. As soon as we started, I mean, it was just a beautiful, the way I could describe it is like a bridal glory, like a bridal realm of the love of God. It was so beautiful. <laughs> Thick oil slash honey wine. All right, so this was like when I was, you know, serving Eric as his assistant, and it was during the time of like the CFAN boot camp. And so the next thing you know, I'm, I'm running, and this happened the day before I was supposed to meet with him. And I was running with my son in flip-flops, and we were running down the, you know, neighborhood. I ran so hard that I flipped over and my face rubbed against the pavement and there was blood everywhere. I thought I busted my teeth, my lips and all that. So when I washed my face, I noticed that half of my mustache was missing. So it just fell, this whole thing fell off. And then finally, um, what was crazy was, uh, I told Eric, I was like, dude, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not feeling good. I don't think I can come back to the boot camp." And he was like, What's wrong? I said, half of my mustache fell off because I skidded against the pavement. He's like, dude, show me. So I sent him the picture and instead of him sympathizing, he just laughed at me. <laughs>